All right, folks, I also wanted to show you uh, a bit more about the mapping for the analog reading and analog writing and how we might scale values for an environment. So let's go over this uh, basic code that I've got here. I've got a constant in LED pin on pin 13. I'm making that an output. I'm turning on the serial communication. And then in my loop, I've got an integer called photoval that I'm reading on analog pin 2. And that is going to my um, photo resistor that is from uh, power to the A2 pin. And the A2 pin then is also in a, a breadboard line with a 1K resistor that's going to ground. So I've got 5 volts, photo resistor, 1K resistor, ground with the line to a2 where the photoresistor and the 1k resistor meet. I'm printing out that photo value and I've got uh, a mapping then of that value from the 10-bit analog read range which is uh, 0 to 1023 to the 8-bit PWM um, for my LED. This actually isn't going to work on on pin 13, but uh, because it's not PWM. But I'm just that it doesn't really matter for right now. I'm not so much concerned about this as I am this. Um, and I'm looking at this uh, line of values here, right? So I'm reading in the analog read, and in my office I'm getting around 505. And if I cover up the photoresistor, it goes down to about. 150, 140 maybe, um, and when I let go, we're going back up 515, around there. And the, the important thing to note about that is like that's less than half of the range that I could be getting, right? But um, with the analog sensors, like the, the environmental conditions play a role in that, right? Like my office is bright, but it's not insanely bright. So uh, with the normal lighting in here, I'm never going to get up to that 1023. So if I wanted to see my mapping, let's see what, what values I'm getting for that as well. So I'm going to change this to print photo val. And then I do the map. And we'll do serial uh, let's add a tab in there. And then map file. So we can see with my mapping, I'm never going all the way down to zero. And I'm never getting up to 255. I'm only getting like halfway there. So if I want this full range for my LED brightness, um, I could adjust the actual measured range for my sensor, right? So while the sensor is capable of doing this, the context or the environment that I'm in is not allowing for that full range. Uh, so I could change it. So I might say uh, 140 to 520. And I'm hedging that a little bit on either side because I'd rather not go outside of this range, right? And so now I'm getting something that's much closer to the full range of my LED. This is, in fact, you just saw that 257, 256 going over on this end, which could be bad because it's going to then. Um, It's going to loop uh, on the on the LED, right? So the analog write only really understands zero to two fifty five. If I give it two fifty six, it goes back to zero. So when I really want it to be very bright, it's going to be off. Um, two fifty seven then would go to one. You know, it just it just loops. Uh, so that 
can be a cause of like flickering in your in your LED if you're using analog right if you send it a value that's outside of this range it's just gonna like restart counting over again from zero uh, so I want to try to avoid that I don't want to give like a negative number either same thing so maybe I could be a little bit smarter about how I'm finding my range. This is also tricky because you'd have to go into your code and like every new environment you set this up to adjust uh, your range here. So I'm going to write in some auto scaling for the range of my values here. And to do that, I need two global variables. Um, and I'm going to call these min val Sorry. And I'm going to set them both to like the middle of my analog input range. Um, so I'm going to make them both 500 and in max val also equals 500. We'll see why in a second. And this is going to be minval, and this is going to be maxval. All right. So now this would not work at all. I'm going between this value. Is it between 500 and 500? Give me something like that. But it's crummy code. Um, I need to adjust the min and the max before I even get to this. So after. I print out my photo val, I'm going to do some checks. I'm going to say if photo val is less than min val, make min val equal to photo val. So now the min, the photo val will never be less than the minimum value. Okay, I need to do the same thing with max val. If photo val is greater than max val, uh, set max val equal to photo val. And here's a trick. If I'm doing a conditional statement with only one line in it, like this one, I can actually put that all on one line without the curly braces. Uh, and that's just like a, a shortcut. All right, so now what I'd like to see, in addition to my photo val, my map val, I want to see my min and max vals. So let's add those. And I'm getting a lot of, um, I'm gonna have like four columns of prints now, right? So that's a lot, it might help to give me a little reminder of what these values are as I'm seeing them. So I'm gonna add um, a few more things here. Let's say serial print, uh, some text, and this is my photo val. And then I've got a tab and map val, a tab and min val, and a tab and max val. Okay, need my capital letters. All right, 
right, so you can see when I initially set this up, this is around 509, 510. It's mapping uh, very high because uh, the minimum value hasn't gone below 500 yet. Max value is up at 510. Uh, so when you do this, you need to calibrate it before it works, and you calibrate it by trying to push it through the full range you expect it to see in your new environment. So as soon as I put my hand over this, we now see my min value is 139, my max value goes up to 512 now, and now when I do this, we'll see some slight adjustments to my min and max vowels as I get to like darker or brighter parts of the range that you can see in this environment. But my map vowel is going to stay much nicer uh, in, in that 0 to 255 range. I'm going to see a much fuller spread of that range as I dynamically adjust my min and max values for the analog sensor based on the environment I'm in.